Hey babes, Pickle 16 here on another video of my own to commentate over. We're up to Super Mario 64, the Curse of Invisibility Frames Part 9, which is the second to last part of Arc 3, and about, uh, just past halfway of the entire series overall. Part A was basically halfway. So, this basically starts the top floor as it was supposed to be. I'm skipping past the intro because we've seen it like a million times before. It's here where we'll find out what happened to Mario and Luigi and Alberto in the very beginning of the series. Because of the size of this place, it gave me a lot more leeway as to where I could place characters in the scene. So like Enzo's on the very far, like if you look from the wet drywall painting, Enzo's on the very far right, the Apollo's at the stairs. Mario Mario is just in front of him very slightly, and Zayden and me are near the door, so it was very easy to place characters around here. And Fawn's behind here. I didn't exactly um, think, oh yeah, the characters would have wouldn't, would have difficulty seeing each other since, you know, voice in the story they're speaking to each other. Because Memo had already run out, so she was already telling Memo when she came in in part 8. This is also the part, the first part of, the, of um, the series, where I began to experiment a bit more with masked shots, where the characters would be able to move in scenes, and where characters can just be seen either moving in the background in scenes, or just like even just moving around in the scene to show where the character exactly is and that they're not just standing there doing literally nothing. So, and also to prevent the, um, you know, the sleepy thing that Super Mario 64 happens to do. So, that was, that, this was the first part where I happened to do that. I was trying to space out characters so that more people could get appearances instead of just having Fawn go to two places because. So I wanted like all the YTR members to have like a specific level to themselves that they could just claim, oh yeah, I saved that level in the story. Instead of having like someone save two levels. So technically like Zade has died die docs even though I was there as well. So that that's why I have a, t a unique character in every single place. It was mainly to give everyone a chance at having their own place to call, oh yeah, I saved that place. Fairness. Equality. If I had Mario Movie Maker, I'd probably move Zade's head this way, but yeah, I still didn't have Mario Maker. I was doing this again via the freeze camera code and being very, very careful with masking. <laughs> Basically, what about the distribution? I'd already figured that out, but the characters in the story haven't. It was around this time when this video came out that Mario Kart 8 had also released with a big soundtrack in itself which I could use bits from so I think this was the first video where I used Mario Kart 8 in its soundtrack because that was around the time the game released.
well, the soundtrack of the game since the game had already released and I'd already been playing it beforehand. And by soundtrack, I mean when people would actually release two minute variations of the songs, not the one minute previews you got on the website. Excuse me for wanting a full version of the song that's not an extended version of 30 minutes. It's important for me to have two minutes that the song is long enough for any kind of scene, and then, like, to have it short enough so that it's not completely blowing up space on my computer. I'm using this song again. Also, people are going to bust me for this video. Oh, yeah, you used GF Cray as a video, he asked me. And this was a long time ago, a long, 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 long before he came, the super popular person of the um, Splatoon community that he is now, or Splatoon slash SM64 slash Roblox, whatever he plans to do. <clears throat> I was thinking of, like, including him as some kind of role, but he wasn't meant to be, like, Mario Mario 2.0 in the previous part. He was just meant to be some random that existed in the world because of his status at the time as a random... Nowadays, you'd look at him and go, oh yeah, he's a celebrity in a community that he's in, but back then he wasn't, and he only asked me for this and I included him. Because I had no other spots. Well, like, no other people, I mean. No one was really asking, so I had, so since he asked, put him in. I'm fairly sure if Charmix is still around, but like not in the same vein as back then. And technically, she's still obsessed with the same things as now. She was supposed to be in and was in the group at some point, but then like later left and now hangs around, I think, Enzo and whatever. <laughs> I think that guy like changed his name five times or something, but I still stuck with the name that everybody knew. And now you'll find find out what happened to Mario. After all this time, he got trapped in the level. That was my plan. Again, that's another mask shot. That was me again experimenting with more mask shots to do what I did, do what I said before. And again with Mario's R's, I again read his lines out loud. Very easy to find spots in this level, so I could e very easily provide anecdotes for all of the characters here. In comparison to Lethal Lava Land. And the first time I began to use the eyes. Where I would use the eyes to indicate emotion because there's only so much you can do when uh, you're dealing with characters that have no mouths and mustaches or on every single. So, the eyes, eye emoticons, is a better way to do it. And then people would tell me, why don't you use the eyebrows for some of these things? Well, if you try that, you end up with results like Mario Mario 5321. They're ugly. The eyes, whilst weirder, are better, better designed for that kind of thing. Of course, in some people's minds, eyebrows don't equal ugly and eyes equal ugly, but in, for most people, in a cartoony sense, it's the opposite. The Ouija fan is another YTR Warner. If you weren't here for the last part, I put in these characters that were meant to be YTR Warners, as in they weren't in the group, but I still put them in, and the characters would interact with them out of friendship anyway, but they were going to be, like, warning about how bad YTR was. Some of their appearances now are were outdated, like, month. they were rendered outdated months after the release of the video, since they would return to the group a little bit later out of forgiveness or for or some other reason. So, 
but back then and in the time period of the video, it made a lot of sense to keep the characters out. I wanted to do this so that the characters could still have a chance to be in the video and not just be bog bogged out because, oh, you're not on YTR, you're not going to be in the series. So I ended up making every single one of them YTR Warners in the case, oh, yeah, this is how bad YTR is, but, like, you know, keep in mind that I'm still communicating with you right now kind, kind of thing. <laughs> And this is supposed to disprove Fawn's thing before. Oh, he's not going to go crazy there. That's kind of the point. He does. For a split second. <laughs> because, again, you have to avoid invincibility frames. Or if you get them, you're basically trapped yourself. And that's not a good thing. Because then you can't free yourself. And then... You asked me, why didn't Jin, why was Jinder able to do so before? I explained so in part 6, because it was weaker then. And it was technically a group that wasn't meant to happen the way it was, but the way the story was written, I couldn't do it any other way. Normally, in most of the circumstances, if you get invisibility frames, you can't click the side yourself. Because the energy inside you would react with the star and it wouldn't go inside properly. This is me just f fumbling around getting the code to actually work. It's like pressing the F9 key and then um, it will revert your coin. It will bring up your coin title to 99. That So that little pause is me fumbling with the darn thing, but I wanted it to make it seem like um, Hunters is saying, this is it, this is the last coin. But <laughs> That's actually me fumbling to make the code work in time, so then I don't look like, oh yeah, I'm... I haven't actually collected 100 coins yet. Oops. It doesn't make- it doesn't really look any different, but like, I'm just literally standing there and I'm actually fumbling with the code. Because I forgot the GS button for like a second, so... I needed to make sure it was actually still there. And that I was actually pressing the right button. Especially with the freeze camera code and how and how difficult it is to move and of course before I wasn't really using the freeze camera code, but like how small that platform is, it's difficult. And I wanted a better place than somewhere down below to collect the one hundredth coin. And yes, I would have in story I would have made him go on the slide because of the fact that outside there isn't a hundred coins. Most of the coins are in the slide, and yes, he would have gone in the slide. That's what he would have done before he went up there. And yes, would have been able to teleport around. It's just an in-story thing, cartoon logic. Don't think about it too much. And I can't find the exit to this particular corner. Mario's commenting on the fact that he knew of the whole thing beforehand and still got trapped. It's as Fawn said, and as Fawn was hinting to, knowing about it doesn't prevent it from happening. It just means that you're better equipped with the knowledge of what's going on. So, Mario being trapped was happening anyway, even if he knew what was exactly going on. And he's like, oh, done, and I knew for all this time, and I still got hit. Anyone else in, a, in the same position would feel a similar way. Hunters is saying, huh, because he wasn't there. He was in Leaf Lava Land at the time. He doesn't understand that Mario knew about the whole thing beforehand. He's surprised Mario was there because of how powerful Mario is, not because, oh yeah, Mario knew beforehand. He doesn't know Mario knew beforehand until now. What exactly we'll, we'll, we'll do in terms of getting them out. 
And again, this ties into the fact that some of the characters came from external sources and came in through, like, portals or some other type of method of getting into the level. So that's what's going to happen. They're going to be tra transported back to wherever they came from, from random spots in wherever they'll... Mario and T2H will go to the castle because they went in in the castle, but the others will go to completely separate places. I'm also hinting at the fact that Charmix would, and still maybe might have, been included in the series that I was intending to make. So that Charmix would eventually have friends. And technically she still does. So I'm not saying she's like a loner or anything. But like, in the story, that's supposedly the case. And here's the obvious hint. Because of Luigi Fan's affinity to the elemental stars, I decided he should also have the star radius power that Salmon 3 has. But of course, again, it teleports them back to where they came from, so Luigi Fan isn't exactly going to just appear in the castle either. He'll go back to where he came from, Shadow Warrior will go back to where he came from, and T2H will go to the castle. Again, it's... It, it's just it's just ex extending that radius, not exactly changing any of the properties of what exactly it'll do. And she went down, and she went down the slide with no coins, by the way. I just still had that code on to change the thing, um, while I was um recording the, the scene after this, actually. So as you can see, only they appear outside. Meanwhile, there were like six people in that level. So again, if the previous levels hadn't shown you this, this should basically tell you that what's going on is what's going on. Also, I hate this outline, and I should have fixed it before I knew something, but I tried so hard to fix it, but I had no idea how. So it just looks so weird with the black outline. I fixed it now, and it was mainly due to the fact that the texture was too big. So, uh, yeah. Big mistake on my part. Right about the whole knowing doesn't prevent you from getting hit thing. And if you didn't understand, this this, this line should at least alert you to what's going to to the whole... Uh, remarking going on here. And we're not exactly staring at each other, but I guess we can sort of claim it's them staring at each other. I would have had my character stare to, to her right, but again, Mario Movie Maker didn't exist. He ran around in the last two seconds, so no, I was aware of what he, where he was in the previous scene. That was kind of part of the script. It took a bit to script his lines. And me experimenting with masked shots. It wasn't really experimenting so much as like it was actually trying to get the scene to look a bit more lifelike than just, oh yeah, one character per scene. And where I could fit another character in, I wanted to fit them in.
He's doing what he's doing on purpose, and that was why I scripted him that way. Underneath, he certainly knows the seriousness of the situation, he's just being a jerk. And that's kind of how Matt was, and kind of still is. So, I ch had to be very careful when making his lines and the lines around that. Let's get characters out of the scene! wasn't favoritism by the way when I did the R again. That is me supposedly reading the line out and then doing the thing. Behind the camera she ran it. She ran to the left. Good thing no one was masking this shot there, my god. I was trying to imitate that, um, it's that, um, Luigi sound clip from, I think it's the Mario and Luigi series, where, um, Luigi gets bah, hoo 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 hoo, or something like that. It's to indicate crying, but I didn't want to do the sound effect because the scene wouldn't- where is he saying it in the scene? The movements are supposed to indicate how he's saying it, but like, I don't want to put it randomly just there, just cause. And it isn't the full line anyway because he's asking, oh why is it so cold? Because of the heat on it, um, it's, they're surprised it isn't melting. Or Mario Dillon is. Of course, with the fans, I just scripted whatever I could because I didn't exactly see any reasonable patterns, so I gave them a random characterization. The people I know were given the characterization they knew, they that I knew of beforehand. The other, the other randoms were just given. Something based on their name or what they've said or something like that, but I never really cared too much to notice patterns for them. So they're really just random people. And that was kind of the point. But it's more than what Starman 3 would put in a fan kind of thing where he would just give them a line to say in one situation and then never set, have them set, appear in the scene again. And that's even with YTR members, so... <laughs> There's kind of a big difference there. likes using this to taunt Luigi. Oh yeah, your two Luigi's ma Mansion games happened. So, why are you scared? Well, you can still be scared of something even if you're fighting it. So, it's like, even if you're fighting the fear, the fear still exists. So, I did it because it would be probably in character for this to happen. And in the story, Luigi being encouraged often is a thing that happens commonly. Of course, if this were me, you wouldn't hear this comment. You wouldn't see this um, script line exist. But I did it because it was Mario Dillon, and it would make sense in the, in their general logistics. I get, I guess. Also, this is the first time in my series that he appears outside of a Christmas special, which is something I wanted to do for a long time. Said I see mansion music is playing right now since it's quite fitting for the scene. And yes, he did go through an I see mansion in the second one, and I had played and completed that by the time I uh, made the video.
It's a jerk. It was a joke in the group that Murray Dillon hates the fact that um, the Japanese and Tenic and other kinds of uh, um, versions of Super Mario Sunshine say "star get" instead of um, "you've got the star" or something like that. The lack of grammar uh, was a running joke in YCR. And it was something that YTR, uh, that um, Starman 3 taunted him with. So, but I wanted to use it in character in a place that would make sense. Oh yeah, he will be getting the star, so it would be a proper place to use a joke. Instead of just randomly with no context or reason. So, I decided to use the taunt in a meaningful way that would provide um, at least a bit of happiness to the scene since they're supposed to be cheering each other up and that's Matt's, Matt being here, being the cheer, cheered up person he is. It makes sense. <laughs> because associated with the sad and whatever. Kind of like pathetic fallacy. That wasn't meant to happen, and especially with the way the freeze camera could happen, but since Matt's supposed to be a dub, I guess that could technically have happened in story. <laughs> Mekaratsu is another YTR warner. Don't, don't be surprised when I point these out. <laughs> It's a good thing that they have differing color codes, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart by name alone. Since I would call Met as just Met for a long time. At the time, I think Met was obsessed with some kind of um, remix of the song you all know from that Disney movie that got popular in 2013. So I decided to reference that since Met at the time was still uh, going on about it and since it was going on for the longest period of time ever. So that's why, in, since it's a cold area, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> that was a reference to a Skype joke in, as to what um, Matt is saying right now. And also another Skype joke as to the fact that if, like, um, if anybody said, oh, I'm gonna kill you, Matt, he would just turn his icon into a, um, ghost version of, like, himself with, like, some troll face or whatever, and then he'd just act as if he got killed or something in the most jokiest way possible, and back then it made me laugh, since he, like, legitimately took this seriously, or didn't, but it was a joke, serious kind of thing. So, yeah, that was, I wanted to reference that kind of, um, thing going on. It was another thi reference as to the fact that YCR wasn't exactly just the pinnacle for jerks. Not now, because that would give him invincibility frames when he needs to free you all. That's clarification for the audience, not the characters in the story as well. Although it kind of is, and in a jokey way, but it's mainly for the audience. Because they're not the ones analyzing the patterns, I am. He was supposed to run off, but I guess that, that helped. Let's get him out of the scene quickly so I don't have to script any more of his lines. 
the the whole reason is because I didn't I wouldn't have been able to accurately characterize him properly. Not because oh yeah I don't want him in the scene, as well as that. But it's more so of a reason of I want to be able to characterize you properly, and I can't do that when I don't know who you are in such a short period of time. That's how all the fans were going to be, but yeah. me using Mario Kart 8 music. Again, Mario Dillon just randomly appears. That was meant to be him coming out of the little thing, of the little corner since he was there before waving, so I thought, oh yeah, that might make sense. This is a, supposed to be kind of a transition area, so... Imagine it's like one of those weird drop draw distance things that the game would make up itself, so... Even though it is just me wonkily editing that because I needed to make a mask shot where the characters run off and it was so hard to find an angle for that scene. In the Super Mario 64 DS version of this particular room, there's flowers here when Luigi's in the room. So Luigi's commenting on that since that's my experience. And then when I come into this room, Luigi's like, oh, Luigi should come into this room and see the flowers. And Matt's saying, another time in Super Mario 64 DS, not here. <laughs> Much. Contextualizing. More experimenting with masking and shots. Matt said, I'll hang out with Mario Dillon, and Mario Dillon agreed with him, so Matt's saying, yes, you'll hang out with yourself, in a joke, because th that's the way they technically tend to be. Also, more mask testing! This video's full of it! If you weren't noticing it, you'd probably think, oh yeah, you've done a lot more this time. So these two are just left to hang out in the room together. That's supposedly supposed to happen. Much easier to script this without having to analyze the word sentences every time I make Matt comment on it. He says might because he he doesn't exactly know if he is in there or not. They just went into random places, and Luigi and Mario both know that because they they talked about it beforehand off screen before they got trapped, which could have been in any of the previous parts that we just watched. But of course, before when they were saving them. Because jumping in the picture makes the water level different, and they can all swim, but changing it every time, and especially forcing the air to go up if, it, if the level had no water, almost no water, if it's now suddenly forced up to the top, what will happen to them, I'm asking. <laughs> Jokes, haha! -ha. But Enzo already saved the level, so it's impossible for him to be there now.
let's clarify for the previous parts so, so that we can explain that, oh yeah, the counterparts can affect one another and this is going to affect something in the future. Again, noticing patterns. Enzo says Jacob instead of Sama 3. I would say Sama 3 in place of anything in that in that way. Because at the time we spoke with different patterns. So now we have an explanation as to what happened in part 5 for those who who didn't pick up on the hints. I wanted to tie the story together like that, make sure everything was tied up. If you didn't notice him, he was on this platform before. Again, mask testing. And that's actually Mario Mario's color code. I spent like six months waiting for the darn color code. I wasn't going to look at Sama 3's one when it wasn't even accurate. Because it's a fan and Mario Mario is very popular in the Super Mario 64 community, of course he would run off the platform. I wanted him to, I wanted him to run and fall off the platform, not cling on to the edge of the other one, so it was a bit difficult. to freeze camera here with the water and the floating platforms. So since the camera is bobbing up and down, it's a bit difficult to freeze the camera here easily. I decided my swimming style can be attributed to everyone's swimming style. Screw it. They can collect the coins, but they can't collect the star itself. And they wouldn't collect enough coins for the star itself anyway. I don't show the whole thing, I show a bit of it. to script the character in this bit so I decided oh yeah they're going to be thinking stuff while they're swimming so that can be a script line the 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 accuracy eh. the greatness of um having the ability to clarify if you can if your character's speaking in their mind or not They're both YTR Warners, as they would be, if you couldn't tell. Lance really wanted me to include Adam along with him in everything. Like, if he was there, Adam should be there too somewhere. So I tried, but, you know, it's not like Adam has a noticeable pattern, so he's just Sort of in the same vein of a random. Lance isn't though. They turn around in the other scene, then he just turns around again. He's looking at the coins. And technically him too, but whatever. He doesn't know he's that he's trapped, so he thinks he's not. That Vindimka hasn't come on their side or anything, they're just skeptical. 
I wanted to have a character that was skeptical. It would make sense here. See what I mean about the camera bobbing? This is why I didn't do too many scenes like this. The stars would technically keep respawning after a while, so that's what that so that's what kept them um there. Oh, we can't escape. They'll just keep spawning. Yet yeah, we're still here. What's the point of collecting them then? Until they're freed. And since he was on the spinning platform, the one on the spinning platform makes sense. And because of the platforms bobbing too, it makes it this level makes it very difficult to film in. Without gameplay footage or whatever. Luigi Luigi in any of Starman 3's videos or even in any of um, Mario Mario's videos Ha has never come into contact with Alberto. So, I assume that since they have n had no interaction with each other, that LL treats Alberto as more of a fan noob. So LL wouldn't really treat uh, Alberto with much credibility. He treated the other guy with the same credibility as Alberto, because he, does he, d he doesn't know Alberto properly. He hasn't seen him enough. In Mario Mario's Adventures, it would either be just Mar it would be Mario Luigi, Mario Mario Luigi, Luigi, maybe Starman Three, and then maybe whoever else he decides to put in. In uh, Starman Three's videos, Luigi Luigi has only appeared in so few videos that he never had any contact with Alberto. Mario Mario never put him in, in any of his videos, and Starman Three never put him in a video where Alberto was in, so they never had any interaction. So in the series, Luigi Luigi isn't treating. Alberto with any credibility because of that fact. He doesn't see him as important, he's just another fan to him. Mario Mario, however, is actually his brother and much more credible. Distance never mattered to me. Adam. That was the worst shot to mask. Or probably one of the w most... One of the bad ones, because of how close the characters come into proximity around that point in the scene. That was some clever um, editing there. Clever, put that in quotes. And by that I meant splashes when they jumped into the water. Flames don't give off invincibility frames, but it's a pain in the butt to relocate them when they stuff up. And considering how thin the platform is, I didn't exactly want Luigi Luigi just running off into the distance, so I needed to avoid it. And even so, the invincibility frames wouldn't affect them anyway because the star's already been collected. Tiny Huge Island and the remaining three in the upper room, which have their own special part dedicated to them. This is 
what when Fawn said, oh yeah, others are going to help later. This is again tying up those story bits to give everyone a chance, or well, most people. <laughs> And after this, he'll begin to dress up Bertha a bit more. And it's in this series where I don't explicitly state that they're brothers, they're just close friends. Because I hate Simon 3 as Fanon. But I still want to include Alberto, so... Hey, they're still here, they're just not in the same biological family as each other. And then you'd be like, oh yeah, didn't that just contradict your previous statement? No, it doesn't, because he's saying it as in, oh yeah, he's a Super Mario brother, as in a brother, as in a friend, brother, kind of way. Not biological brothers. Because I'm clarifying that difference, so then I can tell you, oh yeah, the characters aren't related. Not like what Starman 3 wants us to think. Stop trying to make a third Mario brother, it's never gonna happen. It's a friend. See y'all, have a good day, peace, and when I next see you, we're gonna commentate over part 10. So see you then.